Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again and today I'm going to be doing another match analysis. Before I get started though, I hope you all had a very very good Valentine's Day. Anyways, uh, this replay is from Frank Obolobolopoulos. Yeah, uh, he actually challenged me to uh, pronounce the name. <laughs> so hope I actually did decent there. So Frank is in a Congo and he wanted to know if he was doing all right in it and you know whether or not there's some things that he could have improved on so here we go everything good and bad about this match all right so the very first thing we want to do is of course look at the enemy team and see what ships are likely to pose a danger to Frank here enemy team has one New York and that's the only tier 5 battleship they've got and that's really the only battleship that is going to pose any threat. The Miyogi and the Ishizuchi against the Congo in an outright fight, not really much of a threat. Cruisers, the Omaha is a bit of a danger in terms of its rate of fire with HE, potentially could burn you down. The Konigsberg, the Furutaka, they all, I mean, they all have torpedoes, so there is potential danger from the cruisers, assuming they can get close enough and mass their torpedoes against the Congo. So that potentially is a threat there. St. Louis doesn't really do much except maybe potentially lighting a fire here or there. Good thing no Japanese destroyers, so no threat of Invisitor being. So that means the American destroyers on the other team have to actually close the range in order to be successful, which is a good thing because as a battleship, if you're able to see the threat coming, you can actually take action to deal with them. First thing that appears is the enemy battleship, the Miyogi, pops up south. Not really all that big of a threat as it is a stock Miyogi and it's going up against an upgraded Congo, so no real threat there. Taking a look around, um, Furutaka is getting close and Frank I do believe holds his shot and this is something that is definitely good play. Uh, when you're going against cruisers, do wait for them to execute a turn before firing so that you can catch them on the broadside. So that well played, which results in four hits and a citadel hit. And that's really, really painful for the Furutaka because once you've taken that much damage, your combat effectiveness overall drops substantially because you're also not going to be able to make certain plays. And of course, as you can tell, the Furutaka's reaction is immediately to start turning away. And that is good. Now, there is an enemy St. Louis that's also coming towards Frank, but. It's not actually the easiest shot as the St. Louis is still at an angle. The easier shot would have been against this Konigsberg, which is presenting a broadside. Would have to say, Frank, uh, you might want to, in the future, for a ship like that, which is presenting a broadside and isn't going very fast, take an extra split second to perfectly line up a, a salvo. Sometimes taking that extra sort of half a second might be the difference between just getting a couple of hits and versus actually landing those Citadel hits. So, you know, especially considering the state of that Konigsberg at the time, which wasn't moving, could have just waited that extra little bit of time. Okay, anyways, enemy torpedo bombers came in, forces Frank to turn into them, and now that means Frank is in the sort of narrow island area. Not really the best place to be in a battleship. Uh, the enemy Furutaka looks like he's decided to go for a torpedo attack. Right about here, Frank, I would actually, I would kind of be expecting you to actually be turning right now to the right and using the island in front of you as cover and then by turning out towards the right, you should be able to get all of your guns to bear against the Furutaka. Now you do manage to citadel him and you do get the kill so that was good however with the way that RNG can be it's better to just have all your guns on target furthermore if you went out through the south I mean even though there was a salvo of torpedoes there so had you turned you still had to be conscious of that but had you turned that way you would have had all your guns on target as you're coming out here against the battleship so you would have been able to have all guns on target instead of being in the situation right now where you've got two forward guns and you've really got to try to rotate the other ones around as well. It's also actually a little bit more risky to come out where you're coming out from because had the enemy Konigsberg not done the runaway part and actually stayed around right behind this island, it could have gotten torpedoes on you. So 
It would have been better, I think, to go the other way, considering if you looked at where the Konigsberg was earlier, was heading away and up to the north. So it would have actually been better, I think, to go south to avoid that Konigsberg. Still, I mean, the overall engagement here has been favorable. Um, you know, one kill has been gotten on the Furutako with a couple of good hits there. Yeah, and here's the, this is the other thing as well. Had you come through the southern area, you wouldn't have to spend so much time turning those rear guns as well, see it? So you would have pretty much constantly maintained eight guns on target. It would have been eight guns on the Miyogi and also eight guns on this Konigsberg. So in the future when you're uh, I guess sailing your ship and positioning it, like do keep in mind where your guns are going to have to be and where you have to position them not just right now but also in a couple minutes time potentially so do keep that in mind it's it's harder to do obviously because you're having to predict things but generally speaking because ships aren't super fast you can make a pretty good guess of where things might be so just a thought enemy konigsberg is obviously going to try to run away as quickly as possible as uh chasing congo is a pretty scary ship to deal with now right here right here is something I didn't really understand. Um, Frank, I'm not sure why you t would turn in in a situation like that and then again put it in a situation where your two rear guns aren't actually brought into the fight because I just didn't see any threat for you to have to do that turn. So had you turned out earlier and brought all guns to bear earlier, I think you might have been able to output a little bit more damage. If you're worried about the Konigsberg, um, do remember that the Konigsberg does have only 6 kilometer torpedoes, so as long as you're pretty much outside of that by a you know a decent margin, as that Konigsberg I believe was at close to 8 kilometers, you wouldn't have had to really worry about any kind of torpedo attack there. Alright, so Frank right now is continuing to chase this Bogue. This Bogue is actually not very far away, uh, only 5.5 kilometers, slightly behind an island. Now Frank is turning his forward guns towards that Bogue, and right there Frank, you could have taken a shot at that Bogue. Uh, the Bogue did not have enough ground cover from that island there to have been able to block your shots. I believe if you had fired your shots would have gone over and hit the carrier. Okay, so right here Frank fires a salvo but misses. Uh, the Minikaze does get the kill. Alright, so let's take a quick look at the map right now and see what's going on. Enemy team is fully pushed through the northern area. Surprisingly they didn't cap A, so that will end up costing their team. The Konigsberg that was running from Frank has gone to Cap B, and Frank is doing the right thing now, and he's going to get his ship turned around, and he's going to engage that Konigsberg as it finishes capping and go south towards the G line. Okay, so uh, one little pointer tip thing here for you, Frank. Um, as soon as that carrier was dispatched, you could have immediately turned your own camera around, face the opposite direction. Press Control X to lock your guns to that position so they start turning already and then start turning your ship and your guns will automatically slowly turn to that point on the other side. Because I think for a few, a good few seconds there, you just had your guns to completely the wrong direction. Have to think ahead. You gotta say, okay, this Konigsberg is gonna be heading towards here. This is my action. I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna intercept him as he's gonna be showing me that broadside and you my guns there. So if you think that way, you can make that sort of prediction about where things are going to be, and you already sort of pre-aim your guns so that when your ship is turned around, your guns are pretty much ready to go. And when that Konigsberg appeared, you would have had all eight guns ready to go to do just massive potential citadel damage. So that is something that you should try to improve on, is just you know making sure your guns are where you need them to be when you get your ship into position. Still, I mean, I have watched you aim, and in most cases, your aim is solid, and it, of course, that is rewarded by giving you that beautiful Citadel hit on that Konigsberg. Konigsberg made it easy for you. That was a long time to be just sailing in a straight line. Cruisers that don't maneuver are asking to get killed. You know, the, the you know when a battleship is trying to shoot at you, just do everything possible, sailing all kinds of crazy patterns, you know, don't make yourself predictable, don't sail on straight lines because you're going to get killed. So 
Frank here bags himself kill number two. Very, very solid kills. Okay. So, oh, excuse the, 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 the textures or something. Something went real wacky with textures in the replay, and like all the trees and the ground and everything start to go kind of crazy. It's like psychedelic almost. Uh, <laughs> it's like a weird rave party, I swear to God. Um, I do like the thinking here, using the scale plane, extending the range so you have a chance to actually hit the Omaha at long range. Although I do have to say is, again, you know, every time you deploy scout plane and the range goes up, the shelf fly time increases quite a bit, and if you're trying to hit something like a cruiser that's going pretty fast, you got to give it quite a substantial amount of lead. So it's a bit of a low probability hit, but still, I mean, I do like the thinking. I mean, had you hit a lucky citadel or something, you could have killed that Omaha, and given your carrier at least a few extra seconds to try to get away. Although, I mean, with the battleship on its tail, it won't be as easy. Enemy team here. So, I mean, after the carrier goes down, they've got an advantage here. But boy, are they going to misplay this horribly. The enemy New York, I mean, had you had any degree of map awareness in the last couple of minutes, you would have noticed that your Konigsberg took Bravo and then was immediately retaken by what can only possibly be the destroyer as Frank's Congo was spotted. But just the New York was so unaware that there was a destroyer right around the corner that he sails right out to a Minakaze within probably like no more than a few kilometers and at that kind of range the Minakaze is going to hurt you like and there goes their New York so the enemy team which initially had that advantage just for that little while by taking out the carrier on Frank's team loses it because their battleship was inattentive and just got wrecked by destroyer enemy carrier again Drops weren't really that good. Uh, the drop there was pretty terrible. Um, just because it's like, had the enemy carrier stacked both squadrons, came in, did a good manual drop, landing four, maybe five torpedoes, could have done a lot of damage there. So uh, carry on that strike didn't really do all that good of a job. Again, one more thing, Frank. Uh, like something I mentioned earlier again, that turret traverse thing. Do it ahead of time so you knew that, okay, look, I'm going to be turning this way to, to avoid these torpedo bombers. Okay, and I know that the Omaha isn't dead yet. It's still going to be there. So as you were turning your ship, you could have just, you know, control x and had your turrets turned that way. So just a thought. I mean, you do actually manage to turn your ship the other way and get the rear turrets on target and bag yourself that Omaha. Now, in this current situation, the things actually don't look all that grim for the enemy team. I mean, they've still got a Konigsberg that has 8,000 HP, they've got a carrier that's still got aircraft, and the friendly Minakaze is being spotted by the Hosho's aircraft. So enemy team has the advantage, at least when it comes to ships. However, the fact that they neglected ACAP for that long and only just took it has given Frank's team a huge points advantage which means that the play is going to be forced on the enemy team. They are going to have to make a play in order for things to potentially go their way. Frank knows where the enemy carrier is and knows where the enemy Konigsberg is and now has one of two plays to make, either the aggressive play or the more passive play that is still you know, extremely likely to guarantee a victory. So the aggressive play is to rush up the 2-3 lines, kill off their carrier as quickly as possible, and then finish off that Konigsberg, which took a torpedo from the Minakaze. Um, and I guess right there, there was potentially a misplay by their carrier, as the carrier drew his fighters away from the destroyer to go do something else, and potentially not spotting that torpedo for the Konigsberg. That or the Konigsberg just didn't pay attention and got hit. I mean, who knows? Um, but now that the Konigsberg is so low, the aggressive option definitely works. Just go straight through the 2-3, kill the Konigsberg, kill the carrier, secure victory. Alternatively speaking, because they're so far ahead on cap point, Frank could just play more passively and guard C and B. In the event that the enemy carrier was a very, very good player, and when I say good, I mean, you know, ability to land very, very nice salvos of torpedoes, you know, in, in a range that's very, very hard to dodge, the manual drops and all that, then I think Frank should have opted in that sense for the aggressive push. 
In this particular case though, the enemy Hosho really wasn't all that good. I mean, you, you can see this right here. Eight torpedo bombers, manual drop properly, you know, one kilometer range away from a battleship, and you can do massive damage. We're talking, you know, anywhere between four to six torpedo hits, which would have just done a crippling amount of damage. Instead, well, the AI for the planes kind of go a bit stupid. They kind of do a little circle twiddle thing and then it's an auto drop and you'll see it eventually eventually the planes will start to do what they're ordered to do so there we go and there's the auto drop and you can see that it is an auto drop because none of the torpedoes converge towards any one point so it makes it easy for frank to turn into them and only taking one torpedo from eight bombers and because the enemy carrier really isn't all that good frank after dodging the planes can just go a little bit passive, just guard B and prevent them from capping Bravo and it's a guaranteed win, especially with a 400 point lead and having two caps versus one. So, you know, I mean this battle will end off with Frank securing one more kill, which is the Konigsberg will attempt to go cap B, Frank will kill him, and that's the match. Overall, Frank, I do have to say that, you know, in terms of aiming and a lot of the fundamentals, I think you've done pretty well there. Um, your actual decision making process seems pretty solid although I do recommend you spend more time working on actually having your guns aimed at the right place so that when you come out your your guns are actually ready to go and that they're not still somewhere else trying to turn around at least that's something you can work on it will help you in the long run when you're playing battleships so that you know when you are about to execute an action it's not like I'm gonna execute and try to catch up it's I've executed the action you know 60 seconds ahead of time so that when the action really comes about to it I'm all ready to go so that's like the main thing I, I say you should work on um, do keep in mind that control X will lock your turret to a certain direction based on wherever you've aimed so do try to make uh, use of that a little bit more and that pretty much does it for this match analysis uh, Frank I hope that you know this match analysis has been helpful and that you might have picked out a little bit more information here and there um, if you guys got any questions, if Frank you've got any other questions, do make sure you leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to try to answer them. I know I haven't been great on comments lately, but I will try. Other than that, I hope you all have a fantastic week and I'm looking forward to talking to all of you again soon.